What's up, heroes? My name is Silo Clone, and welcome back to Crystalline. Today, we're going to meet one of Kara's contacts in Hearthpoint to see if we can learn anything more about these high-energy readings that people have been seeing all over Terra. So the next morning, I wake up with a wide yawn. My body aches from the fight, but otherwise, I feel very rested. I gather my things and meet the group downstairs for a quick breakfast. Then... We begin our journey to Hearth Point. After traveling all morning, we decide to stop and rest for a while. The sun shines overhead in the sky, and there's a soft breeze to balance out the warmth of the day. Zack claims a spot in the shade of a tree where he cleans out his dischargers, and Amelia and Carol rummage through the packs to pass around water. Leanna approaches me. Since we're taking a break, would you be up for some magic training? We can go into the clearing so you aren't just out on the open road. That, yes. Let's do it. Finally, some alone time together. I got nothing else to do. Let's do it. I don't want to go all too creepy just with finally some alone time. Let's do it. I nod. The faster I learn to cast, the faster I can go home. There's no point in putting this off. Let's do it. Leanna smiles. I follow her to a little alcove off the path, or far enough that passers won't get a good view of me, but far enough that we lose sight of the rest of the team. The actual process is a bit tricky. You have to channel the energy out of the crystal, then concentrate on the process of shaping it, refining the energy into something you can use. So to do that, you need to concentrate on the crystal's form and use your mind to alter it. That's a lot of information right away. Um. I'm not sure I got all that. She pauses to think. Okay, you have a manipulator now, so instead of trying to channel the energy from stored within you, try to concentrate on channeling through the manipulator. I look down at the manipulator on my wrist. All right, so I can channel the energy from this crystal. Exactly, like this. Leanna holds out her manipulator. It pulses softly with the blue light, and then a small burst of wind erupts from the manipulator. Okay, I'll give it a go. I stare at my manipulator. I stare hard at my manipulator, trying to focus on the energy of the crystal. I scrunch up my face in concentration, but nothing seems to work. Just concentrate on the energy. Let go of your distractions. Let go of my distractions. I try to clear my mind, but all I can think about is how nothing seems to be happening. It's not working. That's okay. Keep trying. It's always hardest your first time. Heh. <laughs> I think through Leanna's explanation again. Is there something I've missed? Trying again, I concentrate, focusing on the energy. But nothing happens. This isn't working. Don't give up. Try again. Just focus on that energy and use the manipulator to channel it. I know, you, you've said that before. But it doesn't make sense to me. Leanna runs her hand through her hair as she frowns. I don't know how else to put it. Once you get it, you'll know. You just have to keep concentrating and trying. That's not helpful. It's really not helpful, but I take a deep breath to calm myself down. It's not Leanna's fault, and she's being very patient. Is it just me? Why am I not getting it? I'll keep trying until I get it right. Is there something wrong with the manipulator? This isn't working. Well, let's keep trying until we get it right. I don't think there's anything wrong with the manipulator. And uh, no, duh, it's not working, so we'll keep trying until we get it right. Leanna hasn't given up on me, so I shouldn't give up on myself either. I have to keep trying. For my waifu. My face flushes as I try to find the energy of the crystal. But I'm still unsuccessful. Leanna looks concerned at the sweat beating on my temple. Are you okay? I sigh heavily. <sighs> this is hopeless. It just takes practice. I could tell Leanna wants to stay positive, but her words feel flat. 
This is taking a toll on her, too. I don't know what else to do. She frowns as she thinks, then shakes her head with a sigh. How about we take a break for now? Maybe if you have a chance to think about it a little more, you'll have more success next time. I half-heartedly shrug. Sure. I try to keep the skepticism out of my voice, but Lana seems just as skeptical as we return to the group. Kara, Zack, and Amelia are ready for us when we get back. After I have a chance to rehydrate and grab a quick bite to eat, we continue on our way. The rest of our journey goes far more smoothly than my training. As the sun dips low in the sky, we decide to rest for the night. After securing a well-covered area, we get to work setting up camp. That's a nice fire that we have going. I love that night sky background. Leanna disappears to gather firewood while Zach rummages through the supplies, preparing for dinner. Kara secures our perimeter. I roll up my sleeping roll and Amelia does the same. As she sets down her things, the pongo plushie falls before the plush the pongo the pongo plushie from before falls onto the grass. Amelia carefully writes it and continues to unpack. The pongo jiggles up to the plushie and greets it excitedly. Boy boy. The plushie makes no reaction. But the pongo is undeterred. Boy boy boy. He doesn't understand that it's a stuffed animal. Again, the plushie doesn't respond. The pongo deflates and his face falls. Aww. Boy? Amelia furls her brow, then subtly touches her manipulator. The pongo plushie suddenly bobs to life as a thin layer of water pools underneath. Boy? Amelia tries not to move her lips. Boy? Aww, oh, this could be cute. The pongo's eyes grow wide and he beams. The plushie bobs again and the pongo squishes against it as if in a hug. Aww. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. Amelia cracks a smile which disappears when she meets my gaze. She clears her throat and returns to fiddling with her things. She's secretly a softie. Pretend I don't notice. You know what? I don't think she'll care if we know, but secretly she's a softie. My heart warms as I watch her. She's not as cold as she would have people believe. I go help Leanna find more Kindle, as when we return with the firewood, we get a fire started. Zack pulls out a simple pot and a few basic ingredients, then he gets to work. Soon the fragrance of cooked meat makes my mouth water. Carol waters over to the fire. That smells amazing. What is it? She reaches for one of the skewers, but Zack's impression makes her pause. It's not done yet. She pouts and continues to eye the food. After some time, a very appetizing aroma fills the air, making me hungry. Zack removes the skewers from the fire and scoops porridge into the bowls. All right, it's done. He hands a bowl to each of us, then settles down as we dig in. I bite into the juicy meat and let the taste linger on my tongue. It's smoky and tender. A perfect barbecue. Kara savors the bite. Oh, I didn't know camp food could taste this good. Zack shrugs. It's nothing special. We've been doing this all wrong. No more rotating cooking duty. I vote we have Zack cook for us every night. I vote for that as well if it's this good. Zack turns his head away and he and lets his hair fall over his face. You don't have to make a big deal out of this. Sure we do. I'll be your wingman. Don't get involved. I'll be his wingman. We're doing it. I second that vote. Seriously, Zack. I don't even know what this meat is, and I don't care. Because I want it my belly. You're a man of many talents. Kara looks at Zack with a soft smile on her face. I think she's impressed. That's weird, man. <sighs> I'm trying to help, dude. What? No, dude, I... I stare at Zack, who's entirely focused on me and completely unaware of Kara. This guy's pretty dense. 
I wonder what other talents you're hiding. He shrugs. It's okay. I'll find them all out sooner or later. Zack doesn't respond, but begins to gather the empty bowls. Seriously, though, nobody's cooking can compare. You certainly don't want mine. Especially not mine. Mine either. Zack pauses. I enjoyed it. Ah, there we go. It's not as dense as we might think. Kara blinks. Really? He offers a short nod. It's not bad. Zack looks up and meets her gaze. Kara's grin widens and a small blush creeps into her cheeks. There it is right there. Yes, it's finally happening. This is my cue to leave stage right. Liana, it's our turn. I quietly slip away and I go to sit down at the edge of the campsite. Liana sits down beside me with a small smile. I feel her hesitate before she speaks. So, magic training today. Yeah? I know today wasn't quite what you expected, but after more practice you'll get it. I know she's trying to be encouraging, but this is really the last thing I want to talk about. The thought of having to go through that again fills me with dread. When do you think the next practice should be? Honestly, every day. I swallow the groan that threatens to come out, but I can't hold back my dismay. Every day? Leanna forces a smile. Casting is not easy, and it really takes as much practice as possible. With us traveling to the next temple, this is the best way to get you to learn quickly. She looks away and I see her smile drop. Leanna's clearly as excited about this as I am. But she's trying hard to pretend like that's not the case. I could respect that and appreciate that she's trying. Well, then I hope the next time will be more productive than this time. Leanna tries to sound more chipper than she is. Like I said, nobody can cast their first time. It's something I had to work on for weeks before I was able to even manipulate a light breeze. At least it's not just me. Yeah, because you were like 11. This still sucks. At least it's not just me. It does make me feel better. Because I don't think age really has anything to do with it here. Sure, it's probably a little easier when you're younger, but still. At least it's not just me. Actually, hearing that even Liana had trouble is more comforting than I thought. She's such a talented caster now that it gives me a bit of hope. I smile genuinely. You're right. I'm sure with practice, I'll get it. Lana's mood lifts and she returns my smile. <laughs> That's the spirit. Now come over here, let's cuddle. Lana looks up at the sky. We should probably get some rest. It's another early start tomorrow. As Lana says that, I feel a yawn coming on. That sounds like a good idea. The others are winding down too. Zack stays up to take the first watch. As Leanna heads over to her bedroll, I crawl into mine and try to ignore the hardness of the ground. Eventually, I fall asleep. We wake up in the morning and break down the camp. Then, we resume our journey. After traveling for most of the day, we finally end up at Hearth Point. This is where Arton Hunt is supposedly. I think I'm finally getting used to all the walking as my legs, although tired, don't feel sore. We'll need to find this person quickly. Adventurers aren't known for sticking around in one spot for very long. You don't say. Let's not waste any time then. Emilia nods. I propose we begin our investigation at the taverns. Taverns? Yes, there are two taverns in Hearth Point. One over there. She points to a building by the entrance. And another one facing northeast from the second gate. Kara seems a little surprised by how much Amelia knows about this town. She's probably had to study the geography of Haven Garden and read about all of the surrounding towns and villages. 
Maybe, especially as a mage caster. We don't have too much daylight left. He's right. The sun sets the sky ablaze as it dips closer to the horizon. Let's split up. We'll be able to cover more ground that way. If one tavern is a dead end, then check the other. If he's not in either place, then we'll meet back here. I concur with this plan. Any objections? Yeah, uh, can I go with uh, Liana? No one speaks up. Then let us proceed. Zack, Amelia, and Kara start heading towards the nearest tavern. Wait! They look back at us. We didn't talk about how the group is being split. Does it matter? Kara smirks. I think it's quite obvious. Leanna blinks at me as the group resumes walking. What does that mean? I'm not too sure. We're a couple, of course. Who cares? We have a job to do. I, I really want to hint at this one. I want to see what happens, and I'm going for it. I think I know. I gently take her hand in mine. Leanna's eyes grow wide, and she immediately slips her hand out of my grasp. Damn it. Th that's definitely not it. Although she looks away, her cheeks are pink. What else could it be? Leanna's blush deepens, but she shakes her head. If you have time to make ridiculous comments, then you have time to walk. Let's hurry up and get going. Gonna call worth it. Leanna quickens her pace and starts towards the tavern. Wait up! I jog to catch up to her. Although she ignores me, I can still see her blush and can't hold back my smile. It's a brief walk through town before we reach the place. As we push the door open, a warm smell of bread wafts through the, the air, bringing with it a chorus of laughter. The tables are full of men and women sharing food and pints. This place has a cozy feel, and as we look around, I feel comfortable and welcome. So, Kara mentioned Artin has an eye patch. She pauses and glances at the patrons. We should split up and see if we spot him. I nod. Sounds like a plan. We separate and begin our search. I slowly walk around the tavern, looking for anyone with an eye patch. As I begin to lose hope that he's here, I spot a man sitting alone. He's scribbling furiously in a notebook, but more importantly, an eye patch covers one eye. Finally, a lead. I hurry over to him. As I get close, I notice he's drawing a map. He stops and looks up at me. What do you want? His tone is gruff, but he doesn't seem hostile. Are you Artin Hunt? He sizes me up. What of it? I heard that you found an area of high energy. He continues to stare at me. Uh, I was wondering if you could share that information. He waves a hand dismissively. It's not something to be shared. I can pay you for it. He frowns. You can't just buy the experience of discovery. Coins are merely a construct of human greed, and you need to absolve yourself of materialistic reliance to transcend. Okay then. Whatever that means. Will you at least tell me where it is? He glares at me. I'd like to get back to my work, and you're taking up my time. He taps his pen impatiently on the table. Do you mind? It looks like I've annoyed the guy. I doubt he'll say anything now. Thanks anyway. I leave the man alone and search for Leanna instead. I find her with the rest of our party and approach them. Arden wasn't at the other tavern, but we heard that he's here. He is. Everyone turns to face me. Did you find him? No, then why would I said something because I didn't find him? I nod. Yeah, he's back there. I point back to, th to the back tables. But it seems like he's not the sharing type. I even offered to pay, and he still refused to talk. 
Leanna's face falls into Amelia and Zach seem discouraged. Only Kara remains optimistic. Great, you've done the hard work for us. Zach stares at her. Did you just miss the part about how that guy won't talk even for money? Finding the target is the difficult part. Getting information out of him is just a matter of being tactful. Go on. Kara winks. Zach cracks his knuckles and grins. I get you. We're finally on the same page. I didn't mean beat the information out of him. Oh, never mind then. Zach frowns. You just have to give him an appealing reason to loosen his lips. Are you proposing to exploit his humanistic need to procreate with an attractive maid as a guise to extract the needed information? Yes. If you mean flirt with him to find out what we need to know, then yes. What a cunning method. I approve. Don't, okay. We all stare at Amelia. You do? She nods. That was unexpected. Who shall be executing this plan? Lena, Amelia, Kara. I would trust Kara with this. I don't think Leanna's gonna do too well. Amelia, I don't want to see this happen, but let's see let's see if Kara's able to do it. She has the uh, tactfulness, I should say. You up for the job, Kara? She grants, yeah, she is. I thought you'd never ask. She heads towards the target, swaying her lips alluringly. Leanna looks on with amazement. She turned it on just like that? <laughs> Explains so much. She seems like she's not the only thing turned on. Seems like she's not the only thing turned on. I shift my attention to Zach, who very obviously stares at Kara's derriere. Zach! Zack snaps back to reality and his face flushes when he notices all of us looking. What? I wasn't staring. I call bullshit. No accusation was made, yet your defensive disposition is quite revealing of your intent. Zack coughs and crosses his arms as he looks away. You're thinking too much into this. Or no, no we're not. Not at all. We watch Kara work her magic. She engages Artin at, and at one point even gets him to laugh. She scoots closer to him and rests a hand on his, on his arm. Things seem to be going well. As the conversation continues, Artin suddenly shakes his head and dismisses Kara. She tries to laugh off the dismissal and re-engage him in conversation, but he looks back down at his page and continues drawing. Still stunned, she slowly makes her way back to us. I... I don't understand. Her eyes glaze over in disbelief. It would appear Kara was unsuccessful. Very good. Lana, Amelia. Alright. Well, let's send in the waifu. The, I, I'm thinking the gauntlet might help here a little bit if Kara didn't work. Lana! Lana looks surprised. M me Kara masks a chuckle as Zack snickers. Leanna frowns. What is this music? What's with that reaction? Kara smiles. Oh, don't get me wrong, you're cute. But I'm not sure you've got the personality needed for this type of thing. Who knows, we'll find out. Leanna frowns. And what's that supposed to mean? You're a bit shy. I can be plenty forward. Kara and Zack burst out laughing. As if you fared any better. Aha! Kara smiles drops. That's right, shut her up right away. It's always worked before. And it didn't this time, so shut up. Leanna looks at Amelia. You think I can do it, right? Amelia studies Leanna. I must admit that your propriety does not lend well to the suggestion that you could entice the desired sexual attention. It's a weird way of putting it. Lana crosses her arms and pouts. Even you, Amelia? Oh, okay. How about you show one of us what you've got? 
If you're successful, you can try. Fine. This is going to be interesting. Kara points to me. This, this is finally happening. There's your target. What are you going to do? Lana's cheeks tinge slightly as she meets my eyes. I have a strange feeling in my stomach. She takes a deep breath to gather her thoughts, then flashes me a determined look. She oversways her hips as she walks over to me. The movement is too exaggerated and makes her look like she doesn't know how to walk. Oh, um... She stammers as she tries to speak, almost as if the words elude her. Hey there! Ugh. Sailor? Even worse. I look at her blankly. What? 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 Hi? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great! Despite having an attractive figure and aesthetically pleasing features, it is now abundantly clear why Leanna has been unable to acquire a companion. Now, hey now! At this rate, the only companion she'll be acquiring is a house full of cats. They're bongos. Zack nods in agreement. You guys are so mean! Leanna pouts. I thought it was cute. That was hilarious. Okay, the pongo part was hilarious. I wasn't expecting that, but I thought it was cute. I didn't think it was so bad. Leanna shakes her head saying that to make me feel better. Maybe just a little bit. Before I can say anymore, Amelia speaks. I believe we should nominate someone else. Leanna crosses her arms, but doesn't protest. Wait, seriously? This is the answer? You've got to be kidding me. No way. By process of elimination, this is the one that's going to work. All right. Here we go. How about Amelia? Words I never thought I'd say. Wow. Thanks. What's wrong with you? What? Lana shoots me a disapproving look. She's just a kid. Kara folds her arms and looks at me just as disapprovingly as Leanna. I never thought you'd turn out to be such a creep. The game made me do it. Amelia blinks in surprise. I believe you are mistaken about my age. Amelia's words fall on deaf ears as the girls continue to give me death glares. Okay, maybe not Amelia. Let's try that again. That's everyone, then. Regrettably, all of our options for this plan are exhausted. Great. What are we going to do now? Kara suddenly looks around. Wait, where did Zach go? We search frantically for him before spotting him besides Artin. Oh no, we'll get in trouble with the city guards if he is... To everyone's surprise... Artin's face is deep red as he coyly looks away. He giggles as he hands something to Zack. Zack accepts the parchment and nods at him, then heads back to us. Artin looks longingly after Zack's retreating form. Here. He hands Kara the parchment. She opens it up to reveal a map of the neighboring forest. There's a sinewy path drawn in to indicate where pockets of high energy readings are. Kara looks from Zack to the map and back to Zack. But how did you get this? That's what I'm wanting to know. Zack shrugs. Kara continues to stare at Zack. This time, she seems less surprised and more impressed. Well, at least we have what we need. I'm relieved that someone was able to get Art into crack, but 
how did Zack pull it off? And without it coming to blows, no less. I shake my head. I guess some mysteries will never be solved. I glance outside at the darkened sky. It's getting a little late. Do you think we should stay here for the night, or should we head out? We wouldn't be able to make much progress. May as well spend the night here and get a fresh start in the morning. All right. Amelia stands. Now that our business has concluded, I must take my leave. Everyone stares at her. Where are you going? I have an obligation I must fulfill. If I didn't know any better, I'd say it sounded like you're meeting someone. You are correct. It will not take long, and I will be ready to rejoin you in the morning. Take Zack with you. As Amelia turns to leave, Zack stops her. Are you sure you should go alone? Amelia raises an eyebrow. Surely my parents would mean me no harm. Oh. Parents? Yes. They would be very upset if I were to pass through without visiting them. Makes sense. You have family here and didn't tell us? I did not see the relevance. Don't you want to see them? To visit them is currently the obligation that I am going to fulfill. Good. Let's get to it then. Kara gets to her feet and pushes Amelia towards the exit. I do not understand. We're going to meet your parents. Uh-oh. Do they really want to take me there? Before Amelia can protest, Kara has already let her out the door. The rest of us trail behind and we'll meet Amelia's parents next time. I will end the episode here. That was, um... Very strange, to say the least. I don't know why it forced me into the last option. I didn't want to do it. I knew it wasn't going to work. Well, I had a feeling it was going to work. Let, let, let's be honest. I, I thought it was going to work because it was the last option. But still, either way, as always, if you did enjoy the video, let me know by hitting the like button down below or leaving a comment. If you're new to the channel, unleash your power by hitting the subscribe button down below today as well. And I will see all you heroes in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. May the force be with you and have a great rest of your day. Take care.